All right, Onyx friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting. This is our basics of Onyx playlist here on YouTube. If you are enjoying this so far, by the way, if you haven't subscribed already, be sure to do so here. Now in this video, we're gonna start talking about effects. Effects in Onyx are cool. They're great and they allow you to do a lot of really interesting things, but they're actually pretty simple to learn and to understand how to use. Now, if you've used other consoles, one of the things that you'll find powerful, but a little bit tough to wrap your head around at first, is the fact that in Onyx, effects attributes are just regular attributes like anything else inside the console. Now, if you're new to lighting, don't worry about grasping this right now, it's kind of abstract, but anything we do with effects doesn't get special treatment when we talk about fading it in, when we talk about putting it on a fader or getting control of it. Okay, there's no special treatment. It works the same as any other attribute inside of the console, and this can be very powerful. Now, as we move into the future as well, um, the Dylos pixel mapping engine is going to begin, the developers tell us, to, to take over the regular effects functionality, and we won't use regular effects as much anymore. But for now, we do. So the very first way to build an effect to create one is to simply select some lights, very simply, bring up the attributes, go to a given parameter, such as intensity here. And then we see here, the white box means we're selected on intensity. Now we go to effects. We see when we go to effects, it says swing on intensity. On intensity is important because it tells us what attribute we're working with. If we go down to pan tilt and then effects, you can see we're working with pan and tilt. Let's go back to intensity and then effects. Now we have four different controls to work with. Swing, speed mode, and multiplier. Swing, which will bring up to 100%, is simply how far off of the base where the light currently sits. In this case, it's at 100% in our queue. How far off of that base is the light going to change throughout the course of the effect? In this case, it's going to change 100% off of that base. Now, with a base at full, that means that the effect is going to go from 50% to full, technically from 50 to 150%, but you simply can't go over 100% in the real world. So it pauses. We'll show you that in a second. Next, we've got the speed. This is how fast the effects happens, pretty obvious. You can begin to see when we dial in a speed that the effect is working on the lights. We see what we noted here that it actually goes down here. I'll bring this up bigger. The effect goes down to 50% up to full and then it pauses as if it's going above full and then coming back down. If we took this fader to bring the intensity down to 50%, we now see an effect that runs across the entire gamut. Now there's another way that we can modify this as well. And it's with the mode setting. Mode simply is the way that the effect gets from point A to point B, the way that the swing happens at the speed. The black line is the base, and then the white line is the path that the effects takes. So the default one is this sine wave where the, where the base is in the middle, but the third one, for example, is an addition only. It only adds to the base. Down here, we've got subtraction only, and there are many other options. For this example, we're just gonna stick with the first mode. And then our multiplier is simply a speed multiplier, which can be really helpful, especially with LEDs. Scrolling down, we'll go to effects timing here. Nope. Now let's go ahead to effects timing because we can see here that all 10 of our lights are running the effect at the same time. That's not typically what you want in a real show situation. So we'll add a wave or a step per X to make that look more interesting. Setting a wave of 10 here spreads that effect out across 10 lights. Setting a wave of five spreads that across twice across the 10 lights, right? Because we're spreading that wave, we're spreading the shape basically of this mode across those five lights and then the next five lights. A good tip here is if you want something to appear a little bit more asymmetrical, choose a number that doesn't divide into your total well, and you get a more asymmetrical look. Awesome. 
Another big tip here that I go over much more in detail other places is the grouping tools here on the end. For a quick example, if I went fan mirror per X and I did per count two, and then I did wave per X five, we now get a symmetrical effect. Let's record that. I'll go ahead, press record, press the playback, and I'm gonna store this as an override fader. So first I'm gonna give it a name, intensity effect, and store it as an override. Now I'll press clear twice, and we'll see an override fader is special because it allows us to bring in the amount of effect that, effect that we desire. So here at the bottom, the effect is happening slowly and there's not a large size to it. At full, we see that effect at full, and as we scale it, it scales proportionally. This can be really helpful in a lot of show situations. Awesome. We'll go ahead and bring that fader down and build another effect. Now, the way that we built this first effect can work when we're building any single attribute effect that is just intensity, just on red, or just on tilt. But if we want to work with multiple attributes, it's often best to go here to the effects program window, select our lights, and then select one of these effects macros that are pre-built for us. For example, a red-yellow wave. When we select this, we get the effect, and it's applied to whatever number of lights that we have. And so, all we've got to do to finish it out is set an effects timing. Now, this is a good point to talk about wave versus step. Okay, Wave, as we talked about, spreads the, the effect across the total number of lights that we have. Step, on the other hand, has each light do the effect, and then it spreads that amount. The step, on the other hand, has each light complete the effect, and then it continues on to the next light, and the total number of lights is split up by the total here. So if we scroll this down to five, two lights will do the effect at a time, then it will return back to the, to the first light, etc. If we do two, you can see half the lights do the effect at a time, then it passes to the next light. The difference can be subtle between wave and step, so play around with it and see what you like best. Like for example here, we see a step of two here, where again, half the lights do it, and then the other half of the lights do the effect. A wave of two is similar, but a little bit different, because it spreads that light that across the two lights. It's a little bit difficult to see in this example, but I hope that playing around with it, it'll it'll grasp in your head a little bit better. Now we'll go ahead, record this on a new playback. We'll make it an override as well, and we can play it back the same way. Awesome. At this point, I'm gonna clear and pause for this video and in our next video, full playlist below, as well as the bonus videos here on the end screen. Um, but in our next video, we're going to go ahead and talk about pan tilt effects. They're a little bit different, but you'll find that they're very versatile. We'll see you in that video. Thanks.